Hi everyone, Trent here from Tabletop Unboxing. For today, we're going to be opening up the brand new Throne of Eldrain booster box. So, let's get right into it. Today, we're going to be trying one of the newer styles that I'm going filmmaking, thingy that I'm going to be doing, so you will see my reaction. And I chose the best day to do it because I am looking like Rudolph. Let me just bring the light over here. There we go. Perfect. For scenery. Open this up, get this out, and here you go. This is what a booster box looks like. Okay, let's get it on camera over here, and we will bring it to the side. Let's see if we get any good tools in these. Let's see, Wolverine, Dwarf 9. Walker. I've just opened up like the best, uh, how you call it, the best collector's booster box I think ever, just a while ago, and I'm just like, ah, oh, these are these are fine relative to what I just saw. Oh man, you guys gotta check that out. Lyndon, the steadfast queen, is our rare, and we get a one horse card. Okay, I'm gonna put our rares over here, our mythics over here, and let's see how this goes. Hopefully we manage to get around five hits in this box. Would be nice. Blow your house down. Sideboat Scarecrow, Moonlight Scavengers, Tall as a Beanstalk, Seven Dwarves, Youthful Knight, Elder Peasant, Charm Sleep, Victim Wall. Okay, so this is the first one of the uh, normal boosters that I got. This special borderless one. I think it's a one in. Apologies for the interruption, everyone. I was just called out to lunch. So I'm back and fully fueled, ready to go. Let's see here, Ember Shieldbreaker, Foul Mirror Knight, Arcane Arcanus, Owl, uh, Castle Lockjuin as our rare, and a land plus a token. Here we go. It's not bad, not bad. These rare lands are pretty good. Like this one in particular is one of the best. So for tree mana, you can draw a card, then lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand. So you ever like mill yourself or have no cards left, and this is like, it's pretty good. Not as good as the tap lands that are dual color though, I have to say. So, and then our opt is inside the set, Ginger Brute, Scalding Cauldron. I'm kind of sad that there's no Ginger Brute or Gingerbread Team Planeswalker. That would have been so awesome. Starting from Lion's Claw, Steel Lance, Fires of Invention, and a Planes card. Oh, we also get a, what was that? Oh, nah, got my hopes up. Okay, so we got a Foil card over here, Castle Drawbridge. And this is a advertisement card. Okay. Pretty neat advertisement. Kind of hope we get a bunch of what am I hoping for? Oko is and Jura are the two cards that I really want to get. But in terms of rare, I'm looking for a couple of Dance of the Mance would be nice to have. And what else is there? I can't remember there was a tree tree. No, well, Wild Born Preserver is pretty good as well. So Flash, you can cast it in during your opponent's turn, but the good thing about this is that if they re has reach as well, so they're using like a 1-1 one -one flyer, it's gone. And whenever you cast a non-human creature under your control, you can pay X amount of mana to add plus counters to this one. So I was inside like a sealed event recently, and Jesus, what happened was that I just had to make the game go over so long, the guy ended up getting like 30 counters on his one. I used like the uh, Wrath Piper on him. I got it back, but by that time I had literally nothing else and couldn't defend myself. So it was just downhill from there. Fierce, Wild Hands, Lost of Legion, Red Capper, Silver Flame Ritual, Rainbow Knight, Sector Shriek, All That Glitters, Not Gold, Storm, Fist Crusader as our rare. And a Planes card. And a Foil Planes card. We're hitting all of the Foil cards, baby! Okay, I forgot that I was about to put all the rare cards in there. Oh no, I'll do that starting from now. Come on, booster pack, don't you give me a mythic card. You'll ruin everything. Golden egg. Need to get a couple of golden eggs too. Hmm. Goes really well for Dance of the Mans and Doom Foretold. Gotta like the wizard. Okay, not too bad. Here we go. Land card. Oh, 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 and we got a foil stone coil serpent. 
Okay, put this one over here. Stone Cold Serpent is so good. It has reach, trample, protection from multicolored. And whenever it enters the field, it gets X plus 1-1 one, one counter. So depending on how much mana you play on it, it becomes much stronger. Not really good during Constructed, but extremely good during Sealed. So good. Let's see here, Lux 1 Gorgoyle, Lux 1 Tracker, Rimrock. I think we reached all of our foils now, so don't expect to get any more. But they're always there to be broken away. And a Clock Bridge Troll. Okay, this one's a little bit weird. So this guy, whenever you play him, he creates three GOAT tokens for your opponents. And at the beginning of your turn, they can choose. They can choose to sacrifice a creature, and if they don't, we get to attack with the 8 8. And it's not that hard. If, you, if they don't have an instant removal, then that thing is basically going to be there for a while. I think it's a, how you call, Doom Foretold for them. But at the same time, if they have instant removal and they take away your like 8 8, you're not losing too much. You're not losing anything at all. You just gave them a bunch of 0 1 tokens that are basically useless and they're still playing white. Oh, and our first mythic, Ember Cleave. Okay, if you get this during sealed, you, you build your deck around this. So it costs four mana plus two red mana, and it's flash, so you can play it during your turn, which you want to do, because this one will cost one less for each creature that you're attacking with. And it gives you a plus one one, but it also gives you double strike and trample. So you give it to like a four, four becomes a five, five, then it attacks for 10. It's, it's so good. It just, I don't know, it's a game changer, really. One of my favorites in this set. Okay, Golden Egg, Fling, Lonesome Unicorn, Broken Keith, Entrance, Malevolent, a Flank, Double Peasant. I think I'm going to start skipping to the rares and uncommons in a little bit. If you guys are ready for that, put the rares over here, put these over here. We're doing cracking open these packs. Do, 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 do. Here you go, commons. And here we are, uncommons. Alright. Bagnati. And we got another one of these. Okay, special border cards. Is it are they border frame showcase cards? I think that's what they're called. So this one creates a two two one one human tokens, and you get a one one for all creatures when you tap it. But it's only a two two creature. This is only good if you're playing something like, oh, Rankle Master of Pranks, Mythic. Okay, one of the better ones too, four mana. And one of the things that you're not gonna like realize it is that you really you, you would hit. Uh, sorry, you would think that you only get to pick one of these options when you attack. But in actual fact, it picks up to trade, so you can choose all three of these. So each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. It has haste, so you can use it straight away. Okay, what was I saying about the... Oh yes, this one. There was a Beauty of the Beast card, but I can't remember what it's called. It has a 5-5 five five on it. It only costs 3 mana to summon. And it has a uh, Venture spell as well, which is 1 mana, you create a 1-1 one, one token. That's a human. But, basically, he can only attack if he has a 1-1 one, one on him. A 1-1 one, one creature. Joust. He's a loop rider. Sir, and draw, and escape to the wilds, okay. So you can only attack when that 1-1 one, one counter, or 1-1 one, one token creature exists. It's kind of like, yeah, you can't have beauty without the beast. Okay, Sage of the Falls, Shepherd of the Flock, Fire for Knight, and another Linden Steadfast Queen. Okay. Alright, so I made a great decision in skipping to all the uncommons because there's a lot of boosters in this booster box. I wish they were all collector boosters, but here we are. And a Black Lance Paragon. This is one of the better cards of the set as well because it's a flash. Oh! And we also get an adventure special card. Okay. Draw a card and you lose one life. Put you over here next to all the foils. So yeah, when you play him, a creature on your side of the field gains Death Touch, but at the same time, it also gains Life Link. So, 
Basically, you manage to kill your opponent's creatures. You have a tree one on the field for next turn. You're all set up and ready. Not bad, not bad. Elite Hunt Woman and another Clank Bridge Troll. Okay. Making sure we're not getting any of those super odd foil cards that I'm just putting to the side. There we go. Axling Intruder. Sir Kyra the Grim. Winter Commander. And Bone Crusher Giant, one of my favorites from this set. If you guys saw the video with the Collector's Edition, I talked about him at length. But basically, two damage that cannot be prevented. And whenever he's targeted by someone, that someone, that someone will have to give up two life because they cast it on him. And that can't be prevented either. And he's a four tree, it only costs three mana too. He's so good inside like a red deck. And here it is, Love Struck Beast. Create a 1-1 one, one human token for 1 mana, and Love Struck Beast can attack unless you, create, unless you, unless you control a 1-1 one, one creature. I wonder if they got inspiration from like the Disney adaptation of it. It does look... Oh man, it looks so cool. What am I doing? I was about to be skipping these. Arrgh. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have Sir King the Bull, Bell of the Brawl, Frosty the Winds, and our rare is a Feasting Troll King. Okay, so you might be thinking, what, Trent, this costs six mana to play. Is that even any good? Well, let me tell you, my friend, it is by far one of the best cards. For food decks, anyway, or for seal. But, basically, when you play him, you create three food tokens, and he's a 7-6 creature. He doesn't have haste, though. So you can't attack on the same turn you play him. However, at any time, if he's inside the uh, discard pile, you can sacrifice tree food to get him back onto your field. So you don't have to pay the mana cost again, only once. And a Feyburl Elder. Hmm. Can't say I've seen that one before. But yes, so good. 7-6. Constant populate yourself. So if you mill yourself and then you manage to like, get tree food on the table, Maybe with an Oko, maybe with some Gilded Geese. Get them on straight away. What am I doing? Trent, you, you're such a busy mind. Okay, sorry guys. Lunch has gotten me sleepy. Lockmore Serpent. Okay, put these over here. Lockmore Serpent, so it's a flash creature. It has seven, seven, six mana, but it's a flash, but uh, you can sacrifice a land. It can't be blocked. You can sacrifice a Swamp, and you gain one life and draw a card. And I think the good one is that you can use two mana, and you can exile the top five cards of your opponent's graveyard, and return it from your graveyard to your hand. So yeah, it's a pretty sticky creature. Basically, if you manage to kill it, you exile your opponent's graveyard, get it back. Hitch Wall, Innkeeper, Return of the Wild Speaker. Okay, so this one won me a couple of good games now. Wild Speaker basically lets you draw cards equal to the number of your power that's the greatest on your, any of your non-human creatures. So you can draw. However, the other one was the one that I really enjoyed, which is uh, non-human creatures get tree tree into the end of the turn. And it's an instant, so your opponent ain't gonna see that going. College of Familiar, Special Veteran, Balmere Knight Special Art, okay. And stolen by the Fae! Oh, another foil card, okay. Scorching Flame. And stolen by the Fae. So basically, you can return a creature on the field that costs X amount of mana plus the two blue mana. And depending on how much it costs to return, you get that many inside tokens of uh, flying 1 1 fairy creatures, or Fae creatures. So let's say, I don't know, you have the Feasting Patrol King over there. You cost six mana, you pay six plus two blue. You manage to put them back, you get six flying creatures on your side of the field. Yorvo, Lord of Garenberg. Okay. I actually quite like this guy. He's a, he only costs three green mana. And whenever he enters the field, you put a four four on him. Whenever a green creature enters the field, he gets a plus one one. And if the creature has higher attack than him, he will also gain an additional one one. So he scales pretty rapidly. 
That said, though, he has no protection, so once he's gone, he's kind of gone. One near. And we have Love Stroke Beast, the alternate art. Or the special borderless frame art, or special showcase frame art. I just gotta call it the special art. Okay, super happy about that. And a foil fairy vandal. Okay. So nice. Maybe we can get like a place out of that love stroke thing and then we can play with a couple of them. Rally for the Trones. Lucky Clover! Okay, right. Definitely need a damn ton of you. Drowning in the Lock, I'll talk about that. Wish Claw Talisman. Okay, Wish Claw Talisman. It's such. Oh, and another foil card. Slaying Fire. Okay, the Wish Claw Talisman now. It costs two mana. You can activate it for one mana, it has three counters on it. Activate it, it loses one of its counters, and you get to take any card from your deck and put it into your hand. However, your opponent then gains control of it, gets to use it once, passes back to you, and then there's like no more counters left on it. And happily ever after. I'll talk about that in a bit. There's so many things to talk about. Okay, order of midnight foil. So what you want to do is that you want to play a Tefari deck. Trifari, I think it's from War of Sparks anyway, and as soon as you use your Wish Claw Talisman, you just uh, pop, bounce it back to you, and there you go. You got your free card, Tafari, just like drew another card, and now you have the Wish Claw back, and your opponent can't draw their card. Forever and Champion, not too bad. Oh, and a Donic Grange Foil. The Happily Ever After, yes. I believe you get... Everyone gets five life, draws one card. At the end of your next turn, or at the start of your next turn, was it? If you have over 25 life, and... What was it? 25 life. Oh, Gilded Geese. Here we go. This is a really good one to get. If you have over 25 life, five different colors, five, uh, one of each enchantment, artifact, and whatever, then you automatically win the game. I don't see that becoming very popular. It's quite a, uh, it's a very <laughs> weird win condition, but I've seen weirder things happen. Ranger of the Ravens, Servine, Oakland Ranger, Castle Vantress. Okay, this is one of the better Scree lands. Well, one of the better rare lands. So it will enter attack unless you control an island already. So that's fine. You only need one card. That is perfectly reasonably easy to do. And for 4 mana, you get to scry 2, which is just bonkers. We're running a bit low on booster packs now. Hopefully, we get some more mythics, because we only struck 2 so far. Righteousness, Shambles Suit, and a Castle Garenberg. Okay. Castle Garenberg, I think, is okay as well. I haven't actually used it too much myself because it's quite weird, so you play it, you pay 4 mana, and you get 6 green mana in return. They can only use to play uh, creature spells or their abilities. I can see some decks building around that. Order of Midnight, Inspiring Veteran, Sorcerer's Broom, Fabled Passage, okay. This is also one of the better rare lands. So basically what it is is that it will let you search your deck for one land, basic, and it will go in, tax, unless you already control four lands. So if you have three lands and you play Fable Passage, then you play it to like use the ability to get your land, then that means that you now have four lands as soon as you activate it. So if you have now four mana to activate and your deck is one card shorter, so it's easier to draw the cards that you want. And a Cauldron of Eternity! Love this card. So it costs 10 plus 2, right? And you can summon creatures, and well, it becomes cheaper, buy 2 for each creature inside your graveyard. So if you have 5 creatures in your graveyard, it only costs 2 black mana to play. And then when you play it, you pay 3 black mana, well, 3 mana, 2 mana, 1 black, and then you tap it, pay 2 life, and you get to return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. However, once it's on the field, once it's on the field, boys and girls, 
all cards that are sent to the graveyard from your end no longer go to the graveyard, they go to the uh, end of your deck. So you can no longer activate the effects of that unless you discard cards or self-mill yourself. So that's um, that's some good one. I'm actually very sad about that because I had this Cauldron of Eternity and I was ready to ramp it up and play it, but freaking they used that Flax Girl and attacked me straight on with like uh, damage. And then they sacrificed the Flax Girl, so I only got to use it once. Because once you sacrifice her, she can destroy one artifact on your opponent's side, which which happened to be my Cauldron. Was not a happy camper that day. Which was yesterday. Iron Cleric Feet. Okay, at seven mana, you can only cost one. You can only cast one more spell this turn. So at turn four, you can cast a, a seven mana card in your hand, which is nuts. I have actually before. I was quite hyped for this card. I was uh, very hyped for this card. Problem is, I never had a chance to play with it or use it at the moment. So hopefully, I do get around to it. But it just looks really cool. Speaking of really cool, Flaxen Intruder. Look at this. So this is the one that screwed me over so hard. It only costs one mana to play. Or you can play it for its second effect, which you already know, tree, bear tokens. Yeah, like, attack you straight on, you get destroy target, enchantment, or artifact. Hmm, does not sit well with me. A robber of the rich? Okay. Okay, did we already get a robber of the rich? No, we didn't, okay. So as a reach haste has 2-2, two, two, costs 2 mana. Whenever Robert Rich attacks, its offending player has more cards than you. Exile the top card of their library. During any attack, during any turn you attack with a rogue, you may cast that card and may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast. This is pretty good for holding your opponent's cards hostage. Okay, I think that's it though. So you already have like 4 mythics, which is kind of normal for like a booster box. Hopefully we manage to get like that upper curve and get like one more. Okay, let's see. Alright, already everyone. Kenrich Transformation. Arcanist Owl. Lucky Clover again. And a Doom Foretold! Finally! One of these. Okay, everyone. I will tell you about Doom Foretold. It is amazing. So during your turn you play it and then it's your opponent's turn. They have to sacrifice one permanent that's a non-token creature. If they don't, you get two life, draw one card, and the 2-2 Vigilant Knight. And they also discard a card, did I mention that? It's, it's amazing. Okay everyone, this is our last booster pack, so we're gonna slow roll this one. Are you ready? Okay, I am. Maybe. Not too sure. Let's do this. Curious Pair, Merfolk, Sacred Keeper, Rose Sword, Acolyte, Unexplained Vision, Mash of Torns, Ogre Errant, True Love's Kiss, Overwhelmed Apprentice, Trail of Crumbs, okay, Shine Chaser, and Torborn, Taint of the Red Fell. Okay. Not a bad one to end with. So a red source you would deal damage to an opponent or an opponent controls, it deals two that damage plus two. So I was under the misconception that what what what? Guys? Guys? I was under the mis oh sugar. I was under the misconception that that it was only for spell cards that this two thing affects. But what? Well, just a second. I think I just saw what the guys guys. <laughs> we just pulled a foil Garrick. Cursed Huntsman on the last booster pack. Did I get that? Yeah, it's all here, oh sugar. Oh man, this is like the best one. Besides from Oko, I'm so sad we didn't get an Oko, but oh dude. Create two, two black and white, uh, black and green wolf creature tokens with, when this creature dies, put a loyalty counter on each Garrick you control. And there's only one Garrick in the game at the moment, but there's gonna be more coming, but ah. Because minus six is that you get an album with uh, creatures you control get tree tree and trample. And that's only one more than this. If you just proliferate, if you can somehow proliferate the same turn you play this guy, you can just get that album for free. Not that, I'm not sure why you want to kill Garrick that quickly, but like a tree tree plus trample for all creatures is just so amazing. Oh, then you get minus tree, destroy a target creature, and draw a card. 
Mm. I I don't know how we managed to do it. I I think it's because of you guys. I think it's the new camera angle that managed to give us this. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys all of the goodies that we got. A foil Garrick Chris Huntsman, just in case you guys missed it the first time. A robber of the rich. A cauldron of eternity. A rankled master of pranks, and an ember cleave. Okay. All right, I am pretty satisfied with this booster box. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to like hear your thoughts on this set. You've been playing Sealed, or you've been playing on Arena, if you're like psyched for like the release of tomorrow. Well, uh, have a nice day, and I hope you all take care of yourselves. See ya. Bye.